That was a great dinner. So great. Wait, where'd you park the car? Oh, the one I just sold at Carvana. What? When did you do that? When you were still looking at the menu. I went on Carvana.com and all I had to do was enter the license plate or VIN, answer a few questions, and got a real offer in seconds. They picked up the car already? No, I parked around the corner. But they are picking it up tomorrow and paying me right on the spot. Oh, no wonder you picked up the check. Yeah, about that. Uh, thought we were going halfsies. Sell your car to Carvana. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get a real offer in seconds. On today's Smart 7, safety fears sink migrant barge plans, Donald Trump gets indicted again, and lots more. It's Wednesday, 2nd of August, it's National Coloring Book Day, and a happy birthday, Charlie XCX. The Smart 7, it's news, but not the news. Safety concerns are threatening to sink the government's migrant barge plans with no time frame on when asylum seekers will be housed on the Bibby Stockholm. Sweller Bravman's big barge plan seems to be in jeopardy just as the Home Office prepared to send the first 50 migrants to the dock in Dorset. However, government sources are still hopeful the barge can get up and running and we're keen to point out it's just normal health and safety checks and not any concerns over fire safety. Transport Minister Richard Holden didn't seem in a hurry and the important thing is that everything is signed off properly. The checks are going to take as as long as they're going to take. We want to tackle these issues around illegal migration. Yes, these things take time. Uh, Yes, we're being fought every step of the way by both the opposition and their friends in the legal community as well. Meanwhile, Labour's Shadow Justice Secretary Steve Reid accused the government of failing to tackle migration amid reports they have no public data on the scale of those who overstay their visas in the UK. There have been 16,000 cases, I believe, where the government has itself identified asylum seekers who are not eligible to stay here and should be deported. Out of that 16,000, they've only removed 21. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says the current hotel-based migrant accommodation system is just too expensive. I don't think it's fair that British taxpayers are forking out six million quid a day to house illegal migrants in hotels. I want to put an end to that because I believe that if you come here illegally, you shouldn't be able to stay. It was a busy Tuesday for PM Rishi Sunak, who was busy launching a new initiative to get Brits back in the pubs with alcohol duty reforms. Alcohol will now be taxed based on its strength, with booze over 10% facing a price increase, meaning it'll be cheaper to drink in the pub than at home. It sparked complaints from spirits and wine makers that they've been unfairly hit. Rishi, who got heckled while busy pulling a pint, was keen to talk up the benefits of the new duty system. And we're moving to a system which is just inherently more sensible, that the lower the strength of alcohol in a drink, the less tax that you pay. I think most people will agree with that as a common sense principle, but crucially this is about backing British pubs. CEO of the British Beer and Pub Association, Emma McClarkin, says this is a double-edged sword. Linking the beer duty that we pay to the strength is a really positive move forward. But overall there is a beer duty increase of some £225 on bottled and canned beer. And so overall today, unfortunately, we're seeing an increase to our costs. Tuesday evening saw Donald Trump get indicted again, this time by Special Prosecutor Jack Smith over events surrounding January 6th and the 2020 election. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. Trump was the only one indicted at this stage, but there are six other unnamed co-conspirators listed in the 45-page document. They appear to include Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman and Sidney Powell, who were all prominent proponents of the big lie around the election. Trump is due to appear on Thursday at the Washington courthouse in front of Judge Tanya Chutkan, an Obama-era appointee. The special counsel says the investigation isn't over either and cautioned Trump is innocent until proven guilty. He also took a moment to praise those who halted the insurrection on January 6th. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the U.S. Capitol on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots and they are the very best of us. They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it. They put their lives in the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people.
Andrew Tate has been back in court in Romania. The controversial influencer and his brother Tristan appeared at an appeal court in Bucharest to plead for freedom from house arrest over sex trafficking charges. Tate has been formally charged with rape, human trafficking and forming a criminal gang to exploit women. He certainly didn't seem remotely apologetic as he left the courthouse. Who is a victim? Can anyone see? Has anyone seen a picture or video of a victim? I haven't. Strange. The one they put in the indictment, of course, says she's not. And I think everybody with a brain who's watching this understands what's happened. Still to come on the Smart 7, the Lionesses roar into the World Cup knockout rounds and a pointless royal date. Right after this. Welcome back. England are through to the last 16 of the Women's World Cup. The Lionesses roared into the next round with a 6-1 demolition of China with two goals and three assists for Lauren James. The next round sees Serena Wiegmann's team face Nigeria, who didn't look that impressive as they drew with Ireland in their final group game. It seems as though injury worries about Kira Walsh are easing as Lauren James is loving World Cup life. Yeah, I felt free. I mean, whether I'm on the wing or in the middle... I'm, to be fair, I'm just happy to be on the pitch playing and enjoying my football. And yeah, I'm happy that I can contribute to goals as well. Alexander Armstrong has come across many contestants during his time as host on the popular BBC game show Pointless, but one, it seems, trumps them all. The presenter has been spilling the royal tea on a very special round of the quiz. He popped up on BBC's The One Show to tell us all about the time he played Pointless with Her Majesty the late Queen Elizabeth. I was asked to go and speak to the WI in Sandringham. And, you know, it was just it, there was just 34 people in this church hall uh, and just one of them happened to be the Queen. And so I went and spoke and, uh, and then we... And I thought, well, we might play a game of Pointless because um, she was quite a fan <laughs> of Pointless. Amazing. Ever wish you could change the ending of your favourite rom-com? Maybe she chose the wrong guy. Maybe he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, now you can play God and have your say in Netflix's first ever interactive rom-com. The movie, which stars Laura Murano and Scott Michael Foster, lets you choose your ideal outcome. And the good news is we don't have long to wait. Choose Love will be released on Netflix worldwide on the 31st of August. The choices I make right now have really big consequences. I don't know what I want. Everything you do. I just need to figure this out for myself. This is the fun part, when you don't know how it ends. <gasps> Damn. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.